Frogman Friday. Yeah, boy. What's up, everyone? Frogman Friday. I'm Ryan Birdman Parrot. Today, I'm super stoked. Our badass guest is Steve Kaplan, a.k.a. Cap, a.k.a., which I just found out, Door Kicker. <laughs> <laughs> he, served <Yeah>. 16... <laughs> he served 16 years as a U.S. Navy SEAL, exiting service as a Petty Officer First Class. He founded Trident Adventures in 2019, located in Oahu, Hawaii. You can follow Steven on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Handles to follow after the show. To learn more about Trident Adventures, go check out tridentadventures.com. Brother, welcome to the show. Thanks, Ryan. Yeah, man. So good. I'm going to start off with a story because we go okay. way back to day one, and that's just so rad. So Steven and I went through Buzz together. He was there before me. And it was a notorious story because there is nobody who has earned their right to be a Navy SEAL more than Stephen Kaplan. I can promise you that he has earned it. When we get there, you know, you hear things on, on, you know, in books and that about what the O course is and all this stuff is. And then you hear that there's this dude who was running the O course who actually took not just a sliver, but a dagger through his forearm. And it was all the way through his forearm. And the, I think the question at the time was, from you that I remember was, can I continue on? And then <laughs> you're like, uh, wait a minute now. <laughs> it's pretty bad. <laughs> it's just one thing after the next that could possibly show up. Like Stephen Kaplan is dear friends with Murphy. And so they just, they <laughs> he said all kinds <laughs> of fun, but he ended up going and making it into the teams and having a very successful career. And um, he was actually my my sweet mate. So when we went through buds, we were neighbors uh, for most of buds and they were going through it. So it's pretty cool. Anyway, I want to get after it. You were a seal for 16 years. You got out and now you're doing this awesome thing called Trident Adventures. Let's start with the beginning. Why did you start Trident Adventures? Huh. It's actually an interesting story. Um, it, I had all, I was actually planning on moving to Florida. Uh, I'm here in Hawaii right now. I was planning on moving to Florida, I set my wife there and I had to I actually got medically retired out of the Navy after uh, getting three pulmonary embolisms and losing most of my lungs. Uh, and pretty much I was told all the things that require or all the, the things that make you a Navy SEAL, you can't do anymore. I can't, I definitely can't dive. I definitely can't do the skydiving aspect of it. Uh, percussions, things like that, just from shooting and all those things. Those, the doctor's like, yeah, we're, we're going to pretty much say you, you can't do that anymore. Plus I had to be on blood therapy the rest of my life. So that really sucks. Um, so for all those reasons and quite a few other things, I was medically discharged or medically retired out of the Navy after 16 years. Uh, at the time I was serving at Trade at Three, so the train detachment three here on Oahu, Hawaii. And uh, so when I, when, I, when I was going through this whole process, it was supposed to take three to six months max to go through. It took a year and a half. My friend, Jim, Jim Beck, uh, who still works over at, at group three out here as deputy ops, one of the greatest team guys ever. Um, he allowed me to stay at his place while my wife moved to Florida. We bought a house, she got a job and I was just going to be uh, coming right behind her. Um, well, that that's three to six months turned into a year and a half. Uh, and I, I pretty much turned over all my responsibilities in the, in the teams that trade it to someone else. And I'm not the type that just sits there twiddling my thumbs, waiting for things to happen. So I was working uh, in the film industry as a, um, as this called the SEAL tech. So it's a military advisor for a bunch of TV shows for Hawaii Five-0, Magnum PI. Uh, also did a bunch of stunts, a little bit of acting too, which I'm not very good at. <laughs> they even, so the, the, uh, the guy that played Steve McGarry on Hawaii Five-0, a very, very close friend of mine, he actually helped found uh, Trident Adventures. Um, and uh, he wrote my character around my, my personality, around the things that I, I typically say, and they gave me very few lines and I still sucked at it. <laughs> I'm good at the real stuff, uh, but the fake stuff, not so much. Um, but during this time, this year and a half of being processed out of the Navy, I met a really amazing guy, his name is Greg. He's the activities director in Koalina, which is where my shop's at right now. And uh, they were looking to create the most epic dive shop uh, of all time. So they, they, they put their feelers out to the world and all these people are saying, yeah, we can do it, we wanna do it, we can do it, we wanna do that. And then someone recommended asking me, uh, a mutual friend of ours, 
So I, I had a I had a sit down with Greg, and I'm literally in the process of still being medically retired out of the Navy. So I'm still on the Navy's payroll. Um, and they, so he says to me, uh, you know, he's expecting I have all this experience in business. So he says, uh, so how long have you had a dive shop? I go, I've never had a dive shop. He goes, okay. Uh, let me see a picture of your boat. I don't have a boat. Okay. Um, how long have you done any kind of business? I've never done any kind of business. Do you have a degree in business? I go, no. I'm working on it. <laughs> I was working on my MBA at the time. And uh, he goes, what the heck are we doing here? I said, well, you said you wanted the, the best dive operation, uh, at least in, on Oahu, if not Hawaii or the world. So I, I could do that. So I'm a, I'm a SEAL. I never quit. So, and you have, and I understand you have an idea of what that looks like. And you're trying to do this, the square peg in a round hole situation where you have all these other operators out here who are pretty much just going to transplant what they do, bring it here, and it's not going to meet whatever your image is. So I'm unique in a sense where I can build a company around the image. So, so where we're at right now in Coalina, this is definitely a very high-end area. I mean, you got the Four Seasons here. you got a very high-end Marriott here, the Beach Villas. You have Alani, which is the Disney resort here. Uh, that's all on the property that I operate on. So they have an image in their mind. They don't want some some slummy uh, dive shop, which all the gear is just hanging on the walls and, you know, whatever. So we created a high-end dive shop. Like my price points are at least twice as high as the second highest person. And you get what you pay for. Um, so anyway, so they he presented my, my argument to the executive team and they went with me. They basically took a major risk. They went with me. So I had my friend, Josh, who supplied all the money, Jim Beck, uh, another retired SEAL, 30 years. He's the guy that works over at Group 3 right now. He and I started this company together. And then a couple of the actors on Hawaii Five-0, the guy uh, who plays Steve McGarrett, his real name is Alex. And then the guy that plays Junior Reigns, his real name is Beulah, helped found the company. Uh, so we always say this company is founded by two real SEALs and two fake SEALs because they play Navy SEALs on the show. It's kind of fun. <laughs> uh, uh, so we put this whole thing together and we've been crazy successful ever since even during uh even we got shut down during covid for six months i mean completely shut down still had to pay all my bills that sucked uh all my insurance and everything with absolutely no money coming in uh then we were allowed to operate at 25 percent. thank you almighty government it's freaking stupid then they allowed me to operate at 50 percent. thank you again almighty government it's so stupid uh, stripping all of our freedoms away. Uh, and then now over the past about month and a half or so, we've been operating at hundred percent capacity. Uh, so we've been absolutely crushing it. So when we made this company, I, I didn't want to just do a dive shop. That's why I don't call it Trident Diving. It's Trident Adventures. And we call it Trident because the pin that we get as a Navy SEAL, you know, it's called the Trident. And I essentially took all the fun parts of being a Navy SEAL and made a company around that. I left all the sucky stuff with them. And there's plenty of that. So for us, we do the diving, we do the snorkeling. Uh, we have DPVs, dive propulsion vehicles. I have a fleet of 17 of these and they're 5,500 bucks a piece. They are not cheap. Uh, so one of the things that makes us unique is that all my instructor staff are DPV instructors, dive propulsion vehicles, DPVs. And we're able to take people way beyond their limits. So I teach people that are diving how to use these. I teach people that are snorkeling how to use them. So we're definitely, we're definitely very, very, very different. That's just one of the things. Again, the something we use in the SEAL team, so why not? Uh, one of the most unique things about us is that we actually do what's called helo casting. So it's jumping out of a helicopter uh, right over here. So I'm at my shop right now. This is my office. <laughs> Definitely doesn't suck. Uh, right over there. I don't know if you guys can see, but that's that helicopter. That's our helicopter pad, that grassy knoll. So everything I do is centralized right over here where that boat is. Uh, that's where we pick up all of our, our guests, uh, right next to my shops, so everything, everything is centralized. My boat's actually out, out at sea right now with a, with a bunch of divers and snorkelers. But the most unique thing that we do is that helo casting again, over there is where, uh, my, my helicopter pad is. And we're the only ones in the world that do this. Well, at least legally, we're the only ones in the world that do it. Uh, I know this because I wrote the instruction for the FAA. Uh, I'm not a pilot. I partnered with Magnum helicopters, which is a helicopter company out here. The owner's name is Richard Schumann, one of the greatest people that's ever walked this planet. Uh, 
And we partnered together to create this activity that nobody else in the world does. So no kidding, we pick you up, we fly you into this doors off helicopter tour, just like what it was in the SEAL teams. And we do this, this map of the earth flying, just going all over the place, through the mountains, walk, looking at the waterfalls, up and down the coastline, and riding a helicopter like a roller coaster. <laughs> it's so much fun. And then after that, we hover over, over our, our, our casting area where you get to jump, where our boat is moored up, and we have a jet ski in the water. That's our, that's our mobile platform with a sled on the back. And the guy that operates it, his name is Mel Pugu. He's a local legend out here. What awesome, awesome guy. I work with him and uh, his brother, Brian, uh, who are legends here on, on Oahu for uh, surfing and his lifeguards. Anyway, he invented that sled that goes on the back of the jet ski that you see all, used all around the world. And he invented or innovated the process and how to actually rescue people in, in big wave surf conditions. So him and his brother, Brian did that. So Mel, um, Mel is the guy that actually operates the jet ski out there. So you couldn't be in safer hands. In fact, he and his team are the ones that teach us and the SEAL teams how to be better watermen. So we have all the teams that come out here to Hawaii. They do the jet ski course and waterman course. It's, it's uh, Mel and his brother, Brian, that run that whole thing. So that's, that's our safety in the water. So you couldn't be in safer hands between the SEALs that operate this whole thing and then Mel and his team out there operating the jet ski. So once we hover over the spot, you jump out of the helicopter and then we teach you how to scuba dive after. You don't even have to have a certification. So we'll do what's called a, a DSD, a Discover Scuba Dive. So um so you jump and we teach you we teach you how to dive it's pretty freaking epic so other things that we do i have four kill houses i built um you know like ryan for us we have pretty high standards when it comes to kill houses so on a scale of one to ten for us it's like maybe a one or a two <laughs> but for the people that are teaching how to do close quarter combat that want to come with their families and they want to learn essentially how to protect themselves in a bad situation with their family members working how to work together in a close quarter environment, it's it's awesome. Uh, all the walls move. Uh, one of our houses, there's about 300 scenarios that we can do in just one of the four houses. I also have a dojo. They built a dojo uh, where we do hooded box drills. It's my favorite thing we did in the teams. Uh, and uh, everything's padded. The walls are padded. The window cells are padded. The doors are padded. The floor is padded. Everything's padded because you're gonna get you're gonna get slapped around quite a bit. And with that, we do a lot of. Uh, we do a lot of hand-to-hand, -hand. so we teach Krav Maga, also teach Jiu-Jitsu, and we do all the weapons training. So when we go to the dojo, it's a combination of the two. All the walls move, the walls are padded, uh, and everything we do is with role players. And you'll know if you mess up, <laughs> you'll, you'll have memories. <laughs> some of them, uh, some of them uh, on your body, some of them uh, you just kind of head your head, in your head and do like this. Uh, but what it does is it teaches you how to become uh, aware of your surroundings, gives you good situational awareness, and you can't game it. So everything's always different. Role players are different. Sometimes as soon as the hood comes off your head, uh, you're, you're getting smacked in the face and you're automatically in some kind of conflict. Other times it's someone is a hostage rescue situation and you have to be able to talk someone to drop the gun or work your way around to get tactical advantage on the guy. Sometimes it's a straight up mob where no kidding, we'll have 15, 16 role players and they're jumping you. So that if you're ever in a situation like this out in the, in the real world, it's not the first time you've experienced it. So obviously gang Fu always wins. So you're not gonna fight your way uh, and beat all these guys up. It's not the movies. It's essentially how to break contact and get out of there. So we teach realistic stuff, not, not cool guy stuff. It feels cool when you're doing it, but realistic stuff is when, when, to, when to stand your ground and when, when it's time to fight another day. Um, and then we do the same thing. We put the hoods over a bunch of people and then you're in a scenario and you have to work back to back with another guy and be able to read and react to the room, the situation, the role players. And uh, yeah, it's always a different scenario. Sometimes the hood comes off and it's just a guy with his hand out asking for directions to McDonald's. So it's not always a scene where you gotta, you gotta fight. Sometimes it's a, it's a scene where on the level of aggression, on a one to 10, someone's coming at you with a, a zero. So you just have a posture of like a one. You know, someone's coming at you and they're just being mouthy and they're coming at you with like a three. You just keep a posture of four. You don't want to go at straight up 10 when someone's coming at you with a four. You know, so it's learning how to read and react uh, to the situation and, and how to deal with it properly. So that's the hooded box drills in my dojo. I also have a hunting operation on the island of Molokai. So I, I partnered with another with another company out there 
Uh, it's all private properties, 3,500 acres. We fly you there with our helicopter. We land on the gun range. It's an 800 yard uh, uh, gun range. We just, we lay out all the guns for you. So we have about 15 different guns and all hunting rifles. And you can pick which ones you want to use. You pick one, you can pick all 15, I don't care. Uh, and then once you sight them in and you feel comfortable with every gun you want, we hop in the ATVs, which are right there. I mean, we landed right there. ATVs are waiting for you. Guns are waiting for you. All the magazines are already jammed for you. It's all very, very exclusive. Um, very pricey because helicopters are very pricey. And then and I'm with you the whole time. Uh, then we hop in the ATVs. We go track all the, the herds of Axis deer. I don't know if you've read Axis deer, but it is the best tasting deer on the planet. Um, and there's there's so many out there. I actually have an eradication permit, permit given to me by the state. So I have to kill myself or the people that operate that property have to kill uh, five a day just to keep the herd thinned out. Otherwise, they starve to death. And all they eat is like wild basil. So they're constantly just marinating themselves. <laughs> it's seriously the best taste of meat. And typically, uh, guys will get between two and five in a day. And what we do on the way back after we fly there, uh, like we'll, we'll go and we do all the work. So you, you take the shot, we go down there, we, we'll skin it, we debone it, uh, we throw it all on ice then, and then go get another deer and go get another until, until you fill up your uh, coolers. Um, everything we do is like all the meat. If you don't want it, we donate it all. Uh, but we don't just kill animals to kill animals. Um, but afterwards we fly back and on the flight back, uh, I have you change into a wetsuit because you're going to jump out of a helicopter and go scuba diving. That's your day. <laughs> so we also partnered with another, um, with a skydive company out here, Pacific Skydiving. And same thing, we pick you up here in our helicopter. We fly you over to the, the DZ, the drop zone on North Shore. And then you, you jump out of the helicopter. It's all it's tandem unless you have your own, uh, you have your own license. Um, and then we fly you back in our helicopter back here to the to Colina. I think that's it. Yeah, we do a lot of cool stuff. Again, I took all the fun parts of being a Navy SEAL and made a company around it. I <laughs> left all the sucky stuff with them. This is incredible. So let me get this straight. All of this stuff is all encapsulated under Trident Adventures. Yep. You can go on your site and you can do any of this and you just you basically sign up for exactly what you want to do. And yep. you just go knock it out under one company. Yep. Easy. And we have what's called Navy SEAL experiences. And so we have our, 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 our normal operation. Um, that's our scuba diving, our snorkeling, um, and all that kind of stuff. But when you want to do a Navy SEAL experience, uh, you tell us what, we want, what you want to do, and we stitch it all together to create the experience that you are looking for, and it will tell you what it costs. So, I mean, it's expensive because it all includes helicopter tours, and helicopters are crazy expensive. Um, well, this time I started true. Like today, we have uh, we have a lady who's doing some some close quarter combat training with us, and then she's oh I, I forgot uh, she's doing night vision goggle training with us. So I'm a I'm a dealer for Photonist night vision, and this is gonna piss you off. Uh, the their night vision goggles are better than the stuff we use in the SEAL teams. Like they the 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 spec oh I was so mad when I found this out the spectrum. Uh, and the, the infrared spectrum that it, that it can actually detect um, uh, is a much wider uh, spectrum than the ones that we used in the teams. So no kidding when they were demonstrating this to me, because I was sort of part of the development, development, developmental side of this whole thing. Um, sort of, not, not the technology behind it, but the practical uses of it. And uh, no kidding, we brought out an ISLID, very, very powerful laser that operated in the spectrum, shined it, with the night vision goggles that we used in the teams, couldn't see it. That's a very powerful laser. Like we use it for, you know, uh, uh, marking targets or roping in a helicopter for a medevac. Um, put on the, the photonist night vision that I sell, clear as day. I was so mad. And the reason is because our bad guys use uh, lasers in, in that spectrum because they know we can't see it. Yeah, it made me so mad. Anyway, that's the stuff I sell. Um, not the cheap crap that you could buy on Amazon. Like this is the real deal stuff. Um, so the lady coming today is getting night vision goggle training with me too. So tonight uh, we're going to teach her close quarter combat. Then we're going to throw some uh, some NVGs, some night vision goggles on her head, and we're going to do it all with uh, infrared lasers, clearing houses. 
Jeez, no, man. I mean, I'm just <laughs> listening to the whole scenario of everything that you're putting together and I'm seeing the sun break out of the clouds behind you. And I'm thinking like, how can you, how could you have a bad day? <laughs> I don't, I wake up every day and like, dude, this is awesome. Uh, yes, my office. <laughs> so rad. Well, I mean, this is awesome stuff. I definitely want to touch on one point. Tell us about honor watch and tell us what you just did. Cause that's a super, super cool story. Oh, yeah, for sure. So Honor Watch is a nonprofit that we're partnered with right now. Now we just started. So um, we, we partner with other organizations out here, like make a wish. Like we just did a whole wish for this girl named Lila. Uh, and I led the whole thing. And um, she's a, she's a 12 year old girl who wants to be a Navy SEAL. So that alone tells you like, she doesn't want to be like, I want to meet Mickey at, at Disney, you know, <laughs> she's, this girl is tough, man. She's been in and out of the hospital since she was two years old with all kinds of medical issues. Uh, and her wish was to be a Navy SEAL. So I, I already partnered with Make-A-Wish. We've done a lot of wishes for a lot of kids, but this one was crazy special because this is one where she wants to be a Navy SEAL. So awesome. So she shows that we put this whole thing together. We had about 200 volunteers, about 150 of them were all bad guys. So we, we got them all dressed up as bad guys and everything. They all showed up. Um, and Lila, all she wanted, to, her idea of being a Navy SEAL was she got to get pictures in a Humvee. That's, that's what she wanted. And she thought that uh, she thought that was too much to ask for. So we straight up resurrected a Humvee that was in the graveyard. Uh, again, all volunteers. So we actually had a bunch of army guys that this is what they do. They're, they're the mechanics for Humvees. So they showed up, they resurrected this thing. And we had, so Lila comes with her family and we bring her into our dojo um, where I taught her a little bit of close quarter combat. Her, her brother uh, Kenyon and her mama um, along with her two doctors and uh, one of the Make-A-Wish uh, staff members. So between those guys and me, uh, we became the SEAL team. So we started by watching a video. Now, the reason why she wants to be a Navy SEAL is because her favorite TV show is Hawaii Five-0. And her favorite episode of Hawaii Five-0 happens to be the one that I was an actor on. And her favorite character was me because I was the sniper, which I wasn't in the SEAL teams. But uh, I don't have the patience like you, Ryan. But <laughs> I'm really good at close quarter combat stuff. But sniper, it's boring. So, but I was the sniper on the show. So she loved, so when she saw me, she's like, I know that guy. And the guy that we had to rescue was also uh, one of the SEALs on that particular episode, who's Jim, Jim Beck, the guy that helped uh, found this whole company with me. Uh, so she watched a video with, with the actors from Hawaii Five O. So that's the guy that plays Steve McGarry, the guy that plays uh, uh, Junior Reigns, and then a few other characters on Magnum P.I., another uh, show that I work on that they film out here in Hawaii. Uh, so they, they put a video together and then we all stitched it together. And it, the whole thing was, Lila, we need you. We have this top secret mission that only you, only you can do. One of our buddies, Jim, he's been captured. We have to go rescue him. He's one of our boys. So I'm connecting you and I, I got upgraded to commander. So we're, we're connecting you with him. Show you how to become a Navy SEAL. And then we gotta go rescue our boy. So everyone's like crying when they're watching this video. And that's how we start the training. So I spent about an hour and a half doing some training with her. Now she showed up in a wheelchair. She finished running with a 20 pound gun in her hands. It's so awesome. So we do some training. We do some night mission goggle training with her. And then, uh, then it's game on, it's time to go. We hop in the Humvee where she's in the turret with me. And I straight up hold a gun. It's a saw. So uh, with it, uh, two, what, oh, 46, yep. Mark 46. Yep. And it's got 15,000 rounds in it. It's all airsoft. And we do this loop with the Humvee. And when we come around, all the role players are, are activated. And there's like 150 of them. And they're all gathered in one place, like the zombie apocalypse. It's freaking awesome. And I held the, I held the weight of the gun. While she just held the trigger and just <laughs> just like wasted all of them, <laughs> and the whole family's inside the Humvee. It's so much fun. And then we do this loop, and there's smoke grenades going off everywhere. We we had uh, somewhere between three and four hundred smoke grenades going off all over the place. And we do this loop, and then we come back, and all the role players, you know, they're in God mode. So as soon as our back is turned to them, they're reset and somewhere else. So. 
we come back do another loop and she's just picking them all off just laying waste to these guys and then of course the humvee goes down well by design so we have to go on foot patrol and we go and then we start weaving our way through the the field um that uh which is right next to try and tactical group where i teach all my stuff uh, dogs of war owns this field and they were gracious enough to let us use it and we weaved our way through and all the role players da, 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 just light them all up smoke everywhere and i'm holding the gun for her sometimes other times she has the strength to hold it but we're just laying ways to everyone and then we kick through all of our kill houses so we kick through them some of this one of them is pitch black so uh, she has to put her night vision goggles on and she's just laying ways infrared laser just smoking all these guys uh and then we get to the hostage rescue point where, you know, it, and we had a guy, awesome actor. He's got the gun to the hostage's head. He goes, you put the guns down, put your guns down. I'll take them out right now. I'll take them out right now. So I go, Isla, Isla. Uh, so I'm putting my gun down, playing, playing the role. Isla, go around the side, go around the side. And she does. And she totally, I thought she was going to shoot Jim the whole time. She totally just lit up the bad guy. He falls to the ground. We rescue we rescue Jim. We fight our way back to the Humvee. And once we get back to the Humvee, we do a loop. As we're doing a loop, the bad guys are still everywhere. They're still trying to get, get to Jim and get to her. And then we do this loop around. And as we do this loop around, all the role players, they're all now, they're not role players anymore. Now they're going to go over in front of a tank because we actually have a tank. Um, and, and they're all standing at attention. We come back around and everyone's there. It's an award ceremony. And then we, myself and Lila and Jim, we climb up on top of the on top of the uh, the tank. We got big old American flag there. Smoke's going off in the background, and then we award her our, our the trident that you know you and I were awarded. You know we went through a little more a little more pain to get there, but Lila's no no stranger to pain. Um, yeah, so we gave her a, a, our trident, which makes her an honorary Navy SEAL for the day. Uh, people are crying. You know, it was just it was such a beautiful event. Um, Actually, they wrote an article about it in, in Maui News Now. If you go on to our Instagram, it's, it's on, I don't know, I'm just terrible technology. One of those boxes with all the pictures, it's on one of those. <laughs> we'll be making sure to post that out with this uh, so that everybody okay. can see it. We'll put the link in there as well so people can go attach because we are not inept with social media. So we know what we're doing here a little okay. bit. I, I say we, I'm the smallest end of that spectrum like you. But we're going to get it out so everybody can see it, dude. Dude, that is amazing. You went way above and beyond, you know, because we've, you know, in the teams, we do make a wish. Uh, I've done wishes before, and that's way above and beyond. That's certifiably something that I would sign up to want to do. That's like in yeah, right? military for sure. So Yeah, so the, so the Honor Watch side of it, well, with the Make-A-Wish side, they can only, they have, they have a certain cap that they can spend. You know, they can't spend like a million dollars on one person and $10 on another. So there is a cap level per, per child, rightfully so. Uh, so I'm not, I'm not sure how that whole thing works out, but at least uh, for us, we picked up where, where they left off with, with uh, Honor Watch, with Honor Watch Foundation, the nonprofit that's associated with Trident Adventures. So, I mean, if that, if that, um, if we had to pay for all that, had to pay for all the role players, had to pay for everything. I mean, that was a $60,000 event, but with what, what actually, with all the costs associated with it, I mean, it was still significantly more than um, what they were able to cover. So Honor Watch, what they did is they kind of picked up well, where where the Make a Wish capped off at, and uh, that, that's how we were able to to fund this whole thing. Um, like, I mean, those smoke grenades alone. Uh, actually, the company that makes them uh, donated a good chunk of it. We had to pay for all the shipping, handling, and all the the, the hazmat. Uh, fees associated with that and that alone costs like 1200 bucks just for shipping so i mean there's there's a lot of things that that honor watch picked up the picked up the check for uh so then the next day with that we took her scuba diving uh, it's the greatest thing so this 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 girl who was, shows up in a wheelchair saves the day no kidding takes out uh and i think i'm underestimating right now about 1200 bad guys with the amount of loops that we did and the amount of times these guys had to revive and we'd go and shoot them again. <laughs> and then we take her, we take her and her family and her doctors, we take them all, we take them all scuba diving the next day on my boat. And it was so cool. I mean, there was dolphins everywhere, turtles everywhere. I mean, and she was, we got her down to about 15, 20 feet and she did awesome. She did so awesome. So, 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 so proud of her. She's, 
she's a fighter. You'd, you'd like her, Ryan. She's she's a fighter. Yeah, man. That is awesome. Yeah. But she's the sweetest thing, too. <laughs> but that's wow. that's one of the things that Honor Watch does. So we're also uh, we're also uh, partnered with Wounded Warrior Project um, and with the the, uh, the Gleason Foundation for 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 people with ALS, as well as the, the ALS uh, Foundation here in Hawaii. So on August 2nd, that's another thing that we're doing. August 2nd from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m., we have a lady with ALS uh, coming on our boat. So like, no kidding, today, we, we like the deck on our boat's really, really soft. Um, so we can't have someone with electric wheelchair with ALS. You know what ALS is? It's uh, Lou Gehrig's disease. Terrible, Steve Hawking's, that's, that's ALS. It's like the worst way on the planet to die. Um, but I have such a heart for these people because one of my best friends named Sean, uh, he, he's, uh, he's got ALS and he's in the final stages of it right now. So, uh, so I, I, I do what I can for the community because you know, I, I feel a, a connection to them. Um, so after, actually after I get off the phone with you, uh, we're gonna go to my boat. My boat gets back from this tour, and we're gonna we're gonna put a deck on top of the deck to protect my original deck from the the wheels that are with these electric wheelchairs because they'll they'll just tear up my deck. So, uh, but was, we we built a ramp system for them to get on the boat. We did. I just love helping people. You know, I'm supposed to be dead. I, I can't tell you how many times I'm, that I know I was supposed to die, uh, let alone the times I don't know I was supposed to die. I can attest so, to that for sure. I was yeah. probably around at your vicinity for a few of those. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I feel like I'm on borrowed time. So um, why not, why not give back to, to humanity? So this is one way I do it is through my companies, through these nonprofits. Um, and I mean, honestly, it's, I just absolutely love helping people. I, I really, really do. And I think once you go like for guys like you and I, Ryan, uh, I think we go to one extreme or the other in many respects, but I think the most uh, I think the most prevalent side is we become very apathetic. Uh, we just lose kind of feelings or we go the other way and we have such an appreciation for human life because we've been surrounded by so much death and destruction and and evil. We've been surrounded by evil that we have such an appreciation for the other end of that where we can we can do good. Um, so I know that you're like that. I'm like that. I know you can attest for a lot of other team guys that are, that are very much like that as well. Um, and we got we to gotta pull those guys that, that shifted to the apathetic side uh, and pull them into, into, uh, into our, our way of thinking. Because it really, does, it really does change you on the inside. So it's very um, intrinsic in that respect. But the way that it exudes itself out, outside uh, we do a lot of really good things for some people that need some help. That's right. Or they need, or they just just need a little push. You know, like when we would do our runs. You know, that like you got the, when we were in buds. We do our four mile time runs, and you got the guys that are struggling to make the times, and then you got the guys that are really good. We would straight up have the guys that are really good have a hand on the small of someone's back to help push them towards the finish line. I feel like a lot of what uh, guys like you and I do, it's it's a lot of that. Uh, it's just a little help. They're still doing the work. We're just giving them a little extra push and we draw out of somebody else what's already inside of them. Amen to that, brother. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, man, just listening to all this stuff today. So what I'm gathering from Trident Adventures is that you have curriculums, so you have courses, you have awesome adventures that you can go on that are package deals, but then you mm -hmm. can also customize based off of the actual end user, what they're looking to do and yeah, everything's sure. all inclusive. So, and then on top of that, you support the Make-A-Wish Foundation, you support the uh, Honor, Honor Watch. And so you're giving back to the community and you're very, very ingrained in the community you're in. And yeah, this, for sure. So this is, this is very unique stuff because I've seen a lot of stuff around the nation where you can be an operator for a day and it definitely kind of lower level stuff. This sounds super high level. I mean, <laughs> figures oh, yeah, that- I forgot. I forgot to mention I have a live fire gun range too. Oops. So I expect nothing less from you to take it to the <laughs> highest level on everything. I mean, this, so, you know, again, knowing Steven since day one of my, you know, time in the SEAL teams uh, or even before the SEAL teams, he's always conscious, absolutely big and made, <laughs> he's made waves everywhere. So 
it's just super <laughs> super cool yeah man yeah in my live fire gun range it's all private so it's not a public range so we can do anything we want but if we shoot anything from just regular little 22s to we got 50 cals um and anything in between pistols rifles shotguns we can shoot uh you know we can shoot clay we can do anything we want we have all the steel and everything so one of the things we've actually done this quite a few times in the past couple of weeks where again we, we pick you up right over there that's my 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 helicopter pad we fly you and it, the, the flight alone is is worth every penny because i mean we fly through the whole island it is i mean this is a while it's freaking beautiful it's, i mean they feel part of jurassic park here um and we actually fly over the part where they do all that filming which is in Koloa ranch uh, and then we land on the gun range we got smokes going off so you can see anyway we make it feel very military um and you land and we do some small unit tactics there and then we do all live fire shooting and everything we do is one-on-one -on -one. so you have one rso one range safety officer per shooter and we only take up to four people at a time so we'll have four rso's there so we'll just constantly training 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 getting better 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 we take people who have never shot a gun ever in their lives to shoot move shoot move shoot move with rifles with pistols um doing transition drills and well you and i both know you spend eight hours on a range about six hours of that is jamming mags uh so i have an entire team that's all they do is they jam magazines for you so in two hours you accomplish what typically takes eight hours on a range to do and that's on a range with you know people with whistles blowing stand behind the line you know you, it's all static so you take your shots you sit there you wait you wait for a gun check and then and then you call the line cold and everyone goes back and jams their mags not like that with us so um because we have a range safety officer per person we just go to the line shoot come back with them but most of it is we have another guy who's just handing you mags handing you mags handing you mags so by the time you're done <laughs> your arms are smoked and then when you're done put you in a wetsuit fly you back jump out of the helicopter start a scuba dive that's your range day with us <laughs> man i'm signing up for that i am signing up for that because it's been a long so time so much fun dude well, there you have it, folks. So you've uh, just heard from Stephen Kaplan himself, the founder of Trident Ventures. This is what they do. So if you're making a trip to Hawaii, go check out, go to Oahu and check out Trident Adventures. Go to his website, regardless if you're planning your next trip, go to his website, tridentadventures.com. Check him out, get to know who they are. You can reach out to them on social media as well. The handles are to follow after this show. And, you know, congratulations to all your success post teams, brother. Thanks, bud. Yeah, they're actually making a TV show out of our company too. So we signed for 26 episodes. So there's a lot of stuff coming. Unbelievable. Sweet. Well, <laughs> I fully expect to be the bass jumper in it. Pool? Yes. That's one thing I've never done, man. Never don't, done it. You don't do me. it. Don't do it, man. Save your life. <laughs> <laughs> Why? I'm totally going to do it. I can't have you up a one-up on me. Come on now. Oh, come on, dude. I think you win in that department, bro. Already. <laughs> yeah, whatever. I never ran 100 miles either. You're a nutcase. Yeah, I was drunk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I run 100 miles when you're drunk. Good luck. <laughs> that would be cool. <laughs> I appreciate you being on, brother. And uh, we'll definitely push this out and we'll keep in touch. I love it. Well, I appreciate it, right? Yeah, man. We'll talk to you soon, huh? All right. Aloha. Later. <laughs>